Hello, Boston. Hopefully you can see me. I can't see you quite yet. Um, apologies for not being there in real life. My two and a half year old son has a medic is sick for the first time in ages. So I'm stuck here in Silicon Valley, but I'm uh, grateful to get a chance to uh, share really quickly some of the amazing things that are sort of happening that I think touch upon uh, augmented reality and the future of medicine. So hopefully you're seeing my slides here. Um, and I think it's a really exciting time, uh, as you're seeing today, uh, for AR to cross many fields. And there's many technologies that are moving so fast. Uh, I think none of them have a bigger chance to make a splash than, uh, than augmented reality, potentially in, across, and virtual reality across uh, health and medicine. And today I'm gonna try and touch briefly on a few areas from um, how we can use AR in health and wellness, um, in medical education, in diagnosing disease, uh, therapy, and beyond, and maybe stimulate some of your thinking based on what's already here. So as John mentioned, um, after med school at Stanford, I trained just down the road at Mass General Hospital. I was an intern almost 20 years ago back at the MGH, and I also happened to work at the MIT clinic uh, for a couple of years. Uh, I think that was in the time when the AR and wearables were looking like you see in the picture uh, on the left. Um, but uh, since that time, some things are stuck in the past, some things are moving quickly, but we're still stuck in a bit of a sick care versus healthcare era. When I say sick care, it means the information we get as patients, as consumers, as physicians, uh, is still very intermittent and episodic, an occasional blood pressure check, EKG, you're still maybe using fax machines to communicate. And we're quite reactive. We wait for heart attacks or strokes or, in my field of cancer, uh, lumps to be discovered at stage three or stage four. And I think with some of these new technologies, including AR and VR, we can move to be much more continuous with our data and much more proactive, particularly when that information can come to us in real augmented forms. And so the technology is becoming amazing. Uh, you may have the best AR, virtual reality, surgery technology, but unless we get to pay for it and align the incentives, we need to combine those two. So we're entering an era where it used to be fee for service, pay to do more procedures to this value-based era, and hopefully the blending of technology along with um, many of the new components that we're seeing are gonna stimulate some of this new uh, innovation. Now along with how we pay for things, we're changing with where healthcare happens, no longer just in the four walls of the emergency room, the ICU, the intensive care unit. Increasingly, we can take ne technology from the hospital to the home, to the phone, to into and onside our own bodies. And AR and VR, as enabled through our smart computers, is really uh, gonna change all that. And you heard a bit from my friend Robert Scoble. Uh, he likes to say where we're Apple's gonna go with their smartphones, which may be blended reality. I have a sneak peek of the iPhone 10, and here's a look at the iPhone 11, don't tell anybody. Um, but clearly these are riding uh, Moore's law, you'll hear from Metcalf's law next, but with, with exponential technologies moving so quickly, it's uh, important for us to realize what might be here with AR and VR in just a couple of years. So um, it's hard to think exponentially, but that's sort of the crux of where I think all these technologies are going, from a desktop of 2000 fitting on your smart watch today. And of course the price of these head-mounted displays, whether for AR or VR, are getting cheaper and cheaper all the way down to Snapchat. This is enabling a bit of a new era of, of healthcare. We're starting to connect the dots between different fields. It's often called digital health or mobile health or connected health. I think we'll soon just call it health. And it's the convergence of all these technologies from AR and VR to artificial intelligence to 3D printing that are coming together that give us to, a chance to address many of the challenges we have in healthcare from rising costs, aging populations, no matter what happens to Obamacare, it turns into Trump care or Putin care, uh, we'll have hopefully new ways to address those. Lots of big data out there, but how do we make that useful? A great use of AR is to bring the information and make it understandable. So lots of challenges and lots of opportunities. I get a chance uh, sharing the medicine side of Singularity University to uh, look at the convergence of these technologies. In our summer programs, about half of the new companies have been focused on healthcare as one of the big global challenges. And because so much in medicine is uh, coming from different worlds, I founded a program called Exponential Medicine, where we bring together folks from across the equation. In the last couple of years, we've had a lot of AR and VR companies and startups and academic groups uh, show up and stimulate thinking. So some of you might wanna join us this November, a lot of stuff at exponentialmedicine.com. Okay, um, let's take a look at a few examples of where things are coming together, particularly with AR. For, first of all, health and prevention. We know our genetics are important for our long-term health, but it's our behaviors that are much more impactful over time. And it's our bad behaviors that drive most of our chronic conditions and lead to our most of our chronic costs. And now we're just in the era, it's only been six years or seven years since the first Fitbits came out, that we can start to measure our behaviors, a bit of a augmented virtual tool for tracking activity. And we can now go well beyond steps and sleep to 
almost digitize almost element any element. So we're going from our data geeks, quantified self, to quantified health, where we can connect the dots with this information, from wearables to incitables, with things like the Google contact lens, which might stream visual data, uh, implants, which are giving us sort of augmented vital signs inside our bodies that can be live streamed to the rest of the world, starting, of course, with the DARPA in the military world, but coming to sick patients inside and outside of hospitals. Um, we're going from shockables to change behavior, hearables, which are being augmented with how we hear the environment, ringables, like I'm wearing, that can track our sleep. So our augmented world are being connected with our wearable worlds. This has some interesting applications. Let's take a big challenge of mental health. We've gotten better with diseases like heart disease and HIV and, and stroke, but not better with things like uh, mental health and um, things like uh, suicides. We can now use sort of augmented virtual reality to pick up our emotional states with our cameras watching us. We can take a look at our emotional states, our augmented understanding of our voice. This company called Beyond Verbal can parse just your, your, your voice. Remember Deflategate, Tom Brady, I didn't do it, but the software can analyze his augmented in, uh, emotions, possibly self-pity, pain, vulnerability, self-control in the face of struggle. That's augmenting our emotional EQ, for example. And you can all try this on the Moody's app if you wanna see if your boss or boyfriend or girlfriend are really angry or happy with you. Um, we're able to augment from real-time video or um, old video, heart rate and stress. We can use filters on cameras to pick up whether someone's telling the truth. Uh, you don't get a long nose when you're lying, but your nose gets warm, so Pinocchio's onto something, which might give us real-time detection of uh, interesting political uh, commentary, who's telling the truth or not. Um, so all these are coming together. Uh, Boston-based startups like Ginger.io are using these as, as health platforms to track mental health and provide interactivity and virtual hugs. Work at MIT is virtualizing and augmenting our homes so our Wi-Fi can pick up the vi vital signs of multiple people at the same time. So truly powerful ways that we're gonna always be online with our digital data that's gonna connect to our augmented and other worlds. Of course, this information needs to come to you as an individual or your physician in smart ways and our electronic medical records have a long way to go before these will plug in. But we're starting to see the, the combination of data coming through our smartphones, through our health kit that can go not just to us, but in the last few months at Stanford, I can send data to my own primary care doctor right through my phone, and that can augment his ability to help me and, and look at my trends. I like to call it predictalytics. Where's your health data taking you? How do you have a bit of a check engine light for the body and, or an OnStar system to take all these information and make it useful? And that we can update this information just like our Teslas do with their hive mind and go from normal navigation or health maps to high precision ones. So once you have all this information, how do we make it more useful? We need we know behavior change is hard. Digital coaching is here where you can have sort of an augmented coach that you talk through with your smartphone or apps that are AI apps that can help parse your, your information and, and be sort of chatbots for coaching. But we're seeing this come to augmented robots that can be in your home and coach you. We're obviously in the world of Amazon Echo and our smart homes, and these are becoming healthcare platforms where they can listen to your, um, you know, tell you how much blood, what your blood sugar is or help you get help if you fall. We're seeing this coaches come to your augmented mirrors, several companies building sort of AR mirrors where you'll see your virtual coach there, your health score. Uh, so you look in the mirror in the morning, it won't just show you you of today, it might show you you of tomorrow. If you're kind of trying to lose weight, if you're really working out, if you're doing your P90X, you of tomorrow, or being in Boston where I used to live, you know, if you keep eating Dunkin' Donuts, you of tomorrow. And I love Dunkin' Donuts, but I can see myself now and with a little AR app, myself a thousand Dunkin' Donuts later. That's gonna give me a little bit of pause before I reach for the other donut. Or what if you or your friends smoke? What if you could see your skin through augmented reality? Before smoking, after smoking. Powerful ways to potentially see your future self and change behavior. Or if you spend too much time on Facebook, other challenges. So these of course are convergences of augmented reality coming to healthcare. Google Glass wasn't a great consumer hit so far, but has amazing opportunities in the operating room. And many folks have uh, pioneered that to bring data to the surgeon in real time, whether it's vital signs or CT scan data or information you need as an anesthesiologist, or they're being used by physicians in the clinic to, to see data of their patient or describe data so you can see what patient you're seeing, their current medication list, their current labs, streams you and spend more time with face-to-face -face instead of buried in your computer. So this is a way of augmenting the, the physical exam. Um, I've had a chance to try the amazing Meta headset. I think uh, as they say, this may replace our computer screens, our ability to interact with patient information, anatomy or otherwise. Um, lots of opportunities, as you'll see a lot of today, but I think that plays a role in healthcare. A lot of examples you'll see from HoloLens, 
Hollins has already worked with Microsoft to, and with Case Western to change how medical students uh, do anatomy, uh, learning anatomy collaboratively, able to manipulate the body. So getting rid of the old fashioned cadaver lab in, in, in possibility. So lots of ways we're gonna change medical education using augmented and virtual reality. And this is just the beginning. Um, it's gonna help surgeons uh, train or in the operating room do more price pre precise procedures so they'll be able to see where the ventricle is and when they're inserting the device, where it is inside the body. Um, we're seeing the beginning of this come to things like orthopedic surgery. Here I'm wearing a prototype from an Israeli company called Augmetics, and the, it works quite well. They're gonna be combining CT scan or MRI data, let's say for a spine surgeon, to see exactly where the spine is and where they wanna intervene. So overlay the CT scan data, and now know exactly where to start the surgery. Uh, and not just where the uh, surgery might be, but how to uh, then place the right um, uh, pre-planned object, let's say in this case for vertebral drilling. So powerful ways to blend AR and VR into the operating room. Uh, here's another example, uh, let's say for a breast cancer surgeon, to see the breast cancer through the skin of the patient, identify where they wanna get the margins, do a better, uh, less, less uh, invasive and more precise tuned uh, uh, surgical procedure. So these are examples of things that are being prototyped now I think will be part of normal surgical care. Surgical training has a blending state. Let's say the, um, the uh, orthopedic surgeon trying to pick what kind of new device to use in the OR. This is a VR example, but I think it will blend with AR where you'll learn which instrument to use. It may show that to you blended with what you see to help the surgeon learn to do more price, price procedures and to train for that part of the OR. Um, you may be a technician or a nurse. Uh, you'll, able, you'll be able to help your staff find things in the hospital through AR. In this case, they can use an augmented map to find where the IV pumps are. This is work out of Kaiser for the hospital of the future. And then of course, using AR type devices to enable the, the nurse to find the vein and avoid uh, multiple skin punctures. And there's already technologies like that out. The AccuVein technology enables you to do uh, more precise uh, IV starts. When we wanna educate patients uh, about what drugs they're on and why the most might be valuable, you can augment their information to see, okay, here's information about a blood infection, here is the drug, here's how it sort of may sort of work, all using your, your, your tablet and doing simple low cost uh, uh, augmented reality. So just an example of a taste of how this is gonna come to educating physicians, nurses, patients uh, across the, the spectrum. And you can do fun things like this. This is the virtuality. Here's a little demo. It's basically blended reality. So you wear this t-shirt, I have one, and you can now see anatomy of, not the, a virtualized anatomy on that patient. And it's a lot of fun for kids. Um, I've got my two and a half year old doing this right now. So you can augment uh, what your, your anatomy is. There's my son Leo wearing his augmented shirt and he now knows his anatomy at two and a half months, at least the basics. So interesting ways of blending this. And of course, VR is blending with AR, low cost versions, um, therapeutic versions of using AR and VR. For example, for pain patients, uh, while they're getting painful procedures, they can be playing uh, video games putting them in cold environments. And in, in this case, they're using about half the amount of opiate drugs. So really powerful ways we're gonna blend AR and VR in the therapeutic setting to re replace drugs in some cases. Or folks who have phobias, they're afraid to get out in public, they can get into virtual or augmented reality situations where they're on a crowded train or by a spider. Um, we're seeing AR and VR trained surgeons to uh, save babies' lives by seeing complex anatomy. And we're seeing this train, again, not just medical students, but surgeons and beyond, the first cases of recording surgeries um, in the operating room, letting anyone see those in recorded time. Or I was in London for the first live stream virtual surgery. About 3,000 people were watching this live stream surgery in real time. So this is democratizing medical education. And my friend Shafi Ahmad, who leads, leads this effort, just a month ago did the first Snapchat surgery. It was a big hit online. And uh, here's a taste of what you can do with just sort of so low cost Snapchat. So this is the, the vast deferens running down into the scrotum and the, and the sack is just behind it. Four sets, please. So recorded on Snapchat, uh, part of medical education. We're gonna see AR, of course, change uh, the way we exercise. Um, lots of examples of that, of course, Pokey Van Gogh already mentioned today, is really actually a health game. It's boosted health and movement and mental health for many of the folks who played it. I was with the founder of Niantic the other week and he showed us 8.7 billion kilometers were walked so far and 88 billion Pokemon caught. Really a health augmented game. And there's things like Zombies Run, which can have, you know, as you're running and listening to augmented sounds, stimulate you to run longer and faster. Old school augmented uh, technologies are coming together with AR and VR uh, and their effects upon our brain. So we can 
do optimized yoga using things like Microsoft Connect, which is sort of blended AR. We're seeing this applied with brain computer interfaces to train folks to do smarter mindfulness. Uh, and it was mentioned earlier to treat things like attention deficit disorder. These are blending into video games. So video games can be a therapeutic. This is work from Adam Gazelay at UCSF on the cover of Nature a year ago. Uh, playing video games, sometimes blended with AR and VR, can, can, can augment our cognition. In this case, optimize multitasking. Um, and then you can blend that with things like Microsoft Connect. Oops, and uh, you can be playing these games um, in an augmented way to augment your brain faster. And they now spun off a company in Boston called Akali that's using these games for autism and beyond. How about AR in diagnostics, right? You now have a whole set of digital doctor's tools that you can take in your pocket as a clinician or have at home. And here's one example, an otoscope that is a smartphone case. So you can look in your kid's ears and have a virtual or augmented ear exam. And that data can be looked at in real time or in augmented time by your pediatrician. Or maybe that image of the lens will be augmented to give you a better diagnostic tool. So an example of an AR tool for ear exams. Or the old fashioned stethoscope is being augmented. This is a digitized version. You put this attachment on your stethoscope and it can listen to heart sounds and record those sounds and put those in your medical record. Of course, we're now getting into full on uh, pocket stethoscopes, but augmented sound as part of augmented reality. So that the stethoscope can hear and in many, many cases do a better job than I can of listening to heart sounds. So this idea of augmented oral reality, there are already um, startups like Hear One coming out with AR kind of hearing devices that can uh, tune your sound to different environments and um, tune out other sounds. You may use augmented reality to do dermatology exams. So a real dermatologist sees your skin exam or increasingly the um, uh, virtually, uh, sorry, your uh, AI uh, old, uh, a dermatologist will see things. The eye exam is becoming augmented. This is work out of Ramesh Raskar's group at, at MIT, spun off into iNetra. So you can do augmented eye exams on your smartphone, the front of the eye, the back of the eye. Um, I've been involved for uh, many years with the XPRIZE. Uh, uh, tricorder XPRIZE is in its final sca sca uh, stages. Companies like Scanner do making medical tricorders, but they've also developed AR diagnostics. So instead of taking your urine to the lab, you dip it in the urine, and now you use an AR app on your smartphone to take a picture of the, of the dipstick and tell you, do you have a urinary tract infection or not? And send that data to your doctor, to the CDC, to the NSA, whoever else wants it. So lots of ways to augment exams. Now the challenge is we have a lot of data coming at us. No doctor or patient can make sense of this. We need to go from evidence-based medicine to intelligence-based medicine, connecting the dots between all these different fields using not just augmented or artificial intelligence, but augmented intelligence. And that's going to be part of using AR to blend this and make the human patient doctor relationship, I think, even stronger rather than disinterme disintermediated. So again, a blend of these technologies, not the combination. Okay, in the last couple of minutes, virtualized therapy, right? We're seeing um, challenges, let's say women have ch challenges doing breastfeeding. They can do augmented reality consultations on Google Glass platforms and the uh, breastfeeding coach can watch the breastfeeding and help them through that process. A company called Small World is, is uh, pioneering that work. So interesting ways of augmenting teaching. Augmentation coming to augmentation. So for breast enhancement surgery or after uh, uh, cancer surgery to show that woman exactly what she may look like and help the selection process. We're seeing it come for folks with disability, augmenting the blind. So blind can wear basically a, a Google Glass type element and then others around the world can be helped coaching them through their environment. So check out um, iro.io. So you can coach others watching through their lenses. We're seeing virtualized augmented coaching platforms like Omada Health to take folks with prediabetes and turn themselves around being in a virtual social, social network and beyond. We're seeing augmented digital checkups. You no longer have to go to the clinician. You can visit a clinician. Chatbots are sort of an augmented way of doing a communication. Some of those are with actual chatbots and not real doctors. These are things you can already talk to on Facebook, but we're seeing those being augmented with um, a sort of AR doctors on your smartphone that can uh, help you diagnose, diagnose disease, interact in smart ways. Um, and in increasingly these virtual visits will not just be any doctor, but will, will be your physician. And these physician visits won't be just on your smartphone, but will be in different sort of AR type environments where they can do different parts of the exam. And your doctor may become advertised. So it's your physician or your psychologist that you see. In fact, work out of uh, USC, Center for Creative Computing, they can now quickly advertise your doctor. Um, 
And in this case, this is Dr. Leslie Saxon, a cardiologist there. She's been turned, turned into an avatar and can, she can answer questions that most of her patients have in a virtualized way um, when she's sleeping. Um, some of these visits may be blended here with HoloLens. So the physician can be visiting a patient in very highly interactive ways. So the visit again in the future blended with AR, VR uh, is gonna be quite interesting and uh, well beyond the four walls of the usual hospital. Okay, last minute or so here. Um, some of these sort of AR visits could be again, a augmented avatar. The avatar or your real doctor but might be I'd watching you. I'd stay happy. Um, I, I'd rather Watching be your happy. eyes, your voice, uh, uh, your emotional state, and being able to respond. What advice would you have given yourself 10 or 20 years ago? So you get the idea. All this is coming together fast and furious. And one great example is for therapy of folks uh, with, let's say, autism. This is a, a Boston-based company called Brain Power, taking kids who have autism, and when they're using Google Assistant technologies, they can see the emotional state of their mother. They can gamify this, play an emotion game, and learn whether their, mo their mother, in this case, is happy or angry with them. And they can learn then to, when they're off the headset, uh, to be, have much better emotional sensitivity. So a very clever way that this can be powerful in, uh, in autism and beyond. Um, last couple examples, robotics. Robotic surgery is essentially already using augmented reality so the surgeon can see and operate inside the body. These devices are getting smaller. The ability to now blend information. So you're not just seeing through the camera, but you can take data from the CT or the MRI and blend it over, in this case, of the liver and see the blood vessels there. And when you're manipulating the liver in real time through the laparoscope, you'll be able to see where the blood vessels might be or the tumor. So really powerful computation coming together that's gonna really shift laparoscopic surgery, robotic surgery uh, in many interesting ways as this comes together. And of course, then the surgeon now can manipulate uh, and train as well as use this in the operating room in real time to change the way they interact uh, and uh, blend this. Uh, you'll hear from some folks later about the advanced multimodal image guiding operating Amigo Suite that's over at uh, Brigham and Women's. Uh, that's blending the future and the cutting edge of visualization and intervention. So these suites, sometimes the doctor's never in the room, they're intervening through robotics. Uh, there'll be a session later today, today uh, with a young Garrett and others on augmented reality in healthcare. So I encourage you to see that. Finally, we're starting to blend things like robotics. A lot of things developed at MIT Media Lab, wearable exoskeletons are useful for the paraplegic, but that's now blending with augmented reality and neuroplasticity. Folks who are paralyzed, paralyzed from the waist down or beyond, are blending the ability to see AR movement, um, triggering their brain while they're being moved by exoskeletons. And we're seeing this potentially really stimulate neuroplasticity and get folks who are never able to move anything, get to see the beginnings of motion. So really exciting work, uh, it's in early stages, but blending robotics, exoskeletons, AR and VR uh, to help those with severe disability. Um, so watch that space, um, lots happening there. Okay, I'm gonna finish up um, uh, by basically saying, uh, here's just one last example. Let's say you need to find a defibrillator. Um, you can pull up an app, see the map, and then go find that in the room or in the environment around you. This is pioneered out of like Lucy and England, England's group, find the defibrillator to save a life using blended augmented reality. Of course, all this requires design thinking. You can see our environments, improve our hospital settings, take lessons from aviation. I've been a pilot and a flight surgeon. Checklists, simulation, all these things, again, being applied to uh, medical education from very expensive multi-million dollar labs to ones that can be done almost for free on your iPad because you can simulate anything today, and I mean anything. And of course, that's going to uh, hopefully give us better, smarter, uh, more effective healthcare. So um, I'll just finish up by saying, I think the future of all this is crowdsourcing, being able to do clinical trials in the cloud and beyond and sharing data so that we can all not just be organ donors and blood donors, but data donors. And I think that applies across our community. So think exponentially, think of the convergence of AR, VR, robotics, 3D printing, nanotech, all these things coming together. That's the part of the future of medicine. And as we enter this exponential age, Realize that you don't want to be where we are in 2017. You want to skate to where the puck is going to be. And I think if we all do that together, we'll move from our sort of sick care world, episodic, reactive, and siloed, to one that's much more continuous and proactive. The future, as you'll see today, is already here, uh, just not evenly distributed. And I particularly, I think, with the AR community, we can really uh, not predict the future, but go create a bold one. So with that, I'll say um, thank you very much for having me there uh, virtually. Have a great rest of your conference. Thanks.